is up. A welcome back. Do you like to do a build it or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. This week we have another patron request from Helen. Hey Helen. Helen wants to know, how do you fill an engraving with powder coating? Now, we tried this project at least a year ago, at least a year ago, and we spent two full days trying to get this to work over and over again, and every single attempt failed. Now she says we, but she really means me, and by the time I was done, it looked like I spent the weekend at Studio 54. They were as fluorescent green and white, <laughs> <laughs> powder coat all over everything. Me, the lasers, several lasers. All I needed was a black light and some rave music. But since then, we've learned a few things and we've got it figured out and we're gonna show you how to get it done. So what is powder coat and why do we wanna use it? Powder coat is exactly what it sounds like. It's powdered paint. It's actually powdered plastic. It's used to coat things with an electrostatic powder like metal parts for engines, car parts, bikes. Everybody's had a bike and you know how durable that paint is? That's powder coat. It's heated up to 400 degrees to get it to actually cure around the metal. And it's very durable. It's UV resistant. It's nick and scratch resistant. It's pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna use that to fill some engraves. Things like coasters, or cutting boards, anything that's wood engraved, but you wanna fill that engraving and add some color to it. Today, we're gonna to use that powder coat to engrave on these wooden coasters. So step one, we're <laughs> gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed these wooden coasters and some powder coat. I picked this up on Amazon. It's like a pound of it for a couple of dollars. Yeah, it's gonna be in the links below. You can go grab yours. Step two, we're gonna make our initial engrave. Now the one thing we did learn is that you cannot use air assist with this project. Zero. <laughs> because that air is gonna blow that powder everywhere and that's partly what's gonna make a mess and it's gonna damage your laser potentially. We struggled last year with that. So we know that we can use the X-Tool S1 40 watt diode laser and turn off that air assist completely. So we're gonna use that laser to show you how to do this project. But we know it's gonna get a good engrave the first time, and there's no air assist. But don't worry, stay tuned, keep following along. If you cannot turn your air assist off, we've got a second option for you. For our initial engrave on the coaster, we're gonna focus on the coaster itself. Then we're gonna use 30% power, we're gonna use 150 millimeters per second, we're gonna use 180 lines per centimeter. Let's frame it and run it. Time to powder coat. I'm just gonna spoon some of this powder coat on and then scrape it around with a squeegee, try to get in all the little cracks and crevices. I'm gonna scrape away the excess and I'm gonna try to keep it a nice even coat throughout the engrave. And here's the gold in this project. To engrave the powder coat on your wood, you're gonna want a low speed, low power, no air. Slow and low, that is the tempo. <laughs> so we have found, through trial and error, what we found with our X-Tool S1 40 watt diode laser is that we're going to use 6% power, 12 millimeters per second, and 120 lines per centimeter. And here's another big key, is you're gonna have to set it out of focus, offset focus, by a half inch. What if I can't turn off my air assist, Kim? Well, that's where option two comes in. We're going to do that same engrave with our board masked, and then we're gonna add the powder and then we're gonna hit it with a heat gun. But the heat gun's gotta have like very low air, but really hot. And this one's uh, perfect for that.
We have some final thoughts on this project. Uh, the first one being the laser on laser took a lot longer than the laser and the heat gun. A lot longer. It was a lot harder to figure out my settings for the laser on laser. The heat gun, I just uh, heated it up. Uh, now, once you get it, if you were using the same wood and the same powder on a consistent basis, maybe it would be fine. For this final run of the laser curing method, we used a different wood than what we had been using on testing, um, which was this pine board. And we found that our engrave was a little bit deeper with this acacia wood, which meant that the same settings that we had been using didn't work as well. Now it did harden and there's no powder here, but it didn't make it shiny and glistening. So it didn't fully cure like it did on the pine or like it did with the heat gun method. So, you know, maybe I should have upped the power just a little bit and then it would have been a little bit shinier. And if I'm gonna do these coasters all day, every day, maybe that works fine. But uh, Yeah, I think we probably should have tested with the same material because every material is different and I think the depth of your engrave has a lot to do with your speed and power used on the powder. So this, while this does work and we kind of showed you the tips, the tricks that go along with it, go slow, go low speed, low power, and then and then what i don't know if i would ever use this method <laughs> I, this will probably be the last time i ever use that method i might use this method again this came out okay and it was pretty quick and i think it it looks pretty good i might use that one again yeah but, the, the only difference here is that you do have to mask this first but we did run a gold through so we didn't show you this but i'll give you a little close up here we did try a gold powder and it seemed to leave like a haze like a gold haze yeah so i think but for I think something they, like this i would need to mask anyway yeah you or I think that engrave was deep enough where you could probably sand it and it'd be okay. Yes, I do think I can sand that right off. I don't think I would use this for anything intricate, only basic logos, nothing intricate where you might lose pieces if you had to if sand it. If you had it. to sand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So well. this is how you do it. You can give it a try. If you've already done it and you've had great success, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you did. Send us a picture because I would love to see it. I, I, I agree with Garrett. It's okay, but I think I'd use the heat gun next time. And a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. Thanks for supporting this channel. And we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And those coasters are too small to balance. I'm going to balance this piece of wood. Ooh, I will balance this piece of wood on a coaster. Yeah, okay.